Hello everybody and welcome back to TipTart and welcome back to another Basics for Beginners. This time we're taking a look at Golden Ratio Theory and this encompasses the Golden Rectangle, Golden Spiral, Golden Circles, all that sort of lovely stuff. So we're going to take you through it uh, one by one and then we're going to show you how to actually create artwork from that. So essentially the, go the Golden Ratio was derived from the Fibonacci sequence, which is a really famous um, sequence of numbers that act upon an equation. Basically, it's a sequence in which the next number is a total of itself and the previous starting at zero. So um, you can see here that zero and one makes one. Um, that's zero and one makes one. Uh, one and one makes two. Two and one makes three. Three and two make five. Three and five make eight, and and so on. Um, the reason this is important is because it determines a rate of growth that is um, first of all sequential, but second of all inherently pleasing to the eye. Um, although the actual ratio is a is an irrational number that never resolves. Um, so the first ten digits is one point six one eight zero three three nine eight eight seven five. Um, it functionally it can be reduced to one point six one eight. So the golden ratio is one to one point six one eight, and that's the rate of growth of an object which is pleasing to the eye inherently. Um, mathematically, it's known as phi and uses this um, circular symbol with a line through it. Um, and it's best represented by a rectangle whose longer edge is 1.618 times the length of its shorter edge, or its phi. Um, the golden spiral is a spiral which has a growth factor of phi. Um, it's found all over the natural and man-made world and is inherently pleasing. Um, so essentially this growth rate of shapes and scales um, is pleasing to look at for human beings. We don't know why, it just seems to be nice essentially um, you can see here some natural uh, examples of that it can be found in shells it can be found in uh, whirlpools it can be found in tornadoes in space solar systems as you can see um, in man-made structures and artwork you can see sonic the hedgehog's head is uh, incorporating the golden spiral as well as um, lots of roman architecture and things like that uh, as well as donald trump's head um, so now I'm going to take you through how to construct three different things. First of all, uh, a golden ratio rectangle, which we will use to create a golden spiral. From that, we will find some golden circles and we'll use those golden circles to create a, uh, a golden piece of artwork, if that makes sense. A piece of artwork, a logo that adheres to the golden ratio. So let's just dive right in. Okay, so we're back in Illustrator here, and um, you can use any software for this, but Illustrator works the best. Um, and we're just going to determine, first of all, how to create a rectangle who has whose sides have a golden ratio or have phi. Um, so we're going to zoom right in here, and we're just going to hold shift, and with the uh, rectangle or marquee tool, we're just going to draw a square. It doesn't really matter about its size, but it is nice if it's even, say, for like 350 pixels. Okay, uh, bear in mind here that I'm working with a one pixel solid line and no fill. Also, before you you get too into it you want to make sure that the snap to pixel grid is off uh, because otherwise you won't be able to get the exact growth rate and uh, a line selected art pixel grid is also off now it's important to note that the golden ratio and the fibonacci sequence aren't the same thing there is a minor difference in um their growth rate um and also obviously because you're rounding down from whatever it was 1.61899 whatever to a direct 1.618 this isn't a hundred percent mathematical there's no way around that because it is an irrational number however it is good enough to get the job done um and obviously accounting for human error all artwork um can choose to or choose to avoid the uh, golden ratio for whatever reason so start off with a square the first thing to do is to duplicate that square. So just hold down Alt and Shift and just drag so you have two copies of the same square, okay? Then taking the one of the squares, doesn't matter which one, go up to your shape sizes here and make sure that this is unlinked so that width and height can operate independently of one another. And here's a good tip for you. Um, we could do all sorts of things like dividing this square in half, drawing a line from the top right corner to the bottom left corner, taking this line rotating it so that it's level precisely um, putting that line towards the bottom hand of the rectangle here like this and then finishing off and closing this rectangle and that would create us a golden rectangle now that's very convoluted a great thing that you can do inside of illustrator is you can apply mathematical equations to your shape sizes so if you were to take this square here 
and go up to your shape width. And after 350 pixels, um, punch in the code times, which is asterisk 1.618. That will actually times the width of the rectangle by 1.618. So this is a perfectly golden rectangle. This length you can assume is one, and this length you can assume is five or 1.618. Okay, so take both of those shapes and align them to selection uh, to the left hand side of each other. Now this is a golden rectangle inside of which we have drawn a perfect square essentially. Okay, so if we take that, we know that this is still our perfect square that we started off with. I'll just undo. And what we're left with inside the remaining space is another golden rectangle. Okay, this length of one is directly proportionate to this length of 1.618. Meaning, if we were to scale this up, doesn't matter how big, and we were to draw another perfect square inside this rectangle, the remaining space would be another golden rectangle and that continues on to infinite, okay? So obviously we're gonna run out of space visually before um, I can get to infinity, but you just wanna make sure, for example, that's not lined up correctly. It's about a pixels out, but a pixel is important. You want to make sure that you're drawing squares that line up perfectly. So the best way to do that is to hit control Y, which gives you the outlines, and just make sure that you've got smart guides on so that you go from anchor, holding shift, down to anchor, okay? And then do that and carry on. So the next one, until it intersects. And again, until it intersects. There we go. And again, until it intersects. And again, until it intersects, okay? Now, if we were to keep doing this into infinity, no matter how small we got, each one of these remaining spaces would be a golden rectangle. However, for our purposes today, this is probably enough. Now you can already see from um, the PowerPoint slides before that um, this is where we would construct our circle, um, our golden spiral. Now, if you were to draw a perfectly curved line between point A down here on the bottom left and point B on the top right of each of these squares, rotating 90 degrees each time, you would generate a golden spiral. OK, I'm just going to illustrate that by uh, grabbing the pen tool and just drawing a rough one. Please forgive me. This is with the mouse um, that goes like so, like so, like so, like so, like so, like so, like so. Now, if that was perfectly aligned, that would be a golden spiral. We can create this exactly using the ellipse tool if we wanted to. And the way you do that is to center a circle inside each rectangle, align it, uh, its width and height and scale that by two. And then if you were to then align the center of this with the bottom right of that square, you'd get a perfect curve within this section. Okay, you could then obviously go through, delete these, and then move this across. Now this is the bit that I haven't done before, but I think is correct. If you were then to divide this X height with a forward slash by 1.618, Oops, sorry, that was um, <laughs> that was X position, not width. Uh, divide this width constrained by 1.618. You get the smaller part of the curve. So if you then to rotate that and put it through here, you can find yourself constructing a perfect golden spiral. So again, if we were to copy that uh, and divide and so on, it would keep going through here. Now we don't need that for what we're doing today for illustrative purposes, um, but just be aware you can do that. Just keep going through and that's how you get your golden spiral, okay? What we are interested in for the purposes of today are golden circles and we're gonna use these golden circles to create some artwork, okay? So I'm just gonna duplicate this off just so that I know that if I accidentally delete anything, I've got a safe copy of it. And we're gonna create a ellipse inside the center of each one of these squares. So you take your center holding Alt and Shift, you can create a circle that is exactly the size of the rectangle it's contained by until it says path on your smart guides and just do that for each one of the squares, okay? So going down smaller and smaller and smaller. Now what we're doing here is we're using this guide to create circles that decrease in um, diameter by phi or by 1.618. Okay, and what this does is it gives us a series of golden circles that are uh, decremental. I'm not sure if that's a word, but they decrease incrementally um, by phi. So each one of these circles is 1.618 times smaller than uh, its predecessor. Now we don't need these squares anymore. So what we're going to do is just drag each one of these circles off to the side. 
if you want to, you can take time lining them up perfectly, but it doesn't matter because we'll just use the align tool in a minute. And you'll notice that each one intersects with its previous one perfectly. So 1.618 times smaller. And if you were to keep dragging these all over, you'll notice that none overlap and they all align within themselves. Creating um, this sort of pleasing, you can already tell that that's going to be a pleasing design, but creating this um, decrease in growth according to uh, 1.618 rate of growth. Okay, so using these, we can now create a logo that is precisely and mathematically pleasing, which I think is really exciting. Um, you can leave them like that, but I find it's best if you just align them centrally, you know then that you can copy these off to create your logo, okay? And the first thing we're gonna do is it's best really to start from a sketch, um, but you can just sort of build from scratch and I'll do a quick one to illustrate that. So essentially you want to drag these circles out and intersect them and align them in ways that create shapes where they overlap. And then those shapes will be um, according to the golden ratio growth, which as I said before is inherently pleasing in itself. So if I hold down alt, and copy across one of these circles here. Say for example, um, I wanted to make a fish. A fish is a nice simple one to do. So we could then copy across here, like this circle, to the center of this other one, so that we've got this nice overlapping shape here, okay? I then need some way to create a tail of some kind, okay? So I'd probably need one of these smaller circles. And I could align this one like so and then duplicate this over like so. Noticing that I'm taking care to not scale any of these shapes because the whole point of the golden ratio is to do with scale. The differences in size between these shapes will create an inherently pleasing shape when you're finished, no matter what you do really, um, unless you really mess it up. So essentially at the moment, this doesn't look anything like a fish, but if you see where my mouse goes, this sort of section here, could be a nice fish shape. So all we need to do is remove the extraneous extras that we don't need. Uh, we're gonna use the Shape Builder tool to do that, which is uh, Shift M on your keyboard. But I'm just gonna select it here. And if this tool is really simple to use, if you just click and drag between two shapes, it will merge them like so. That's merged that into one. If you hold Alt and drag, it will remove that shape from your selection. Okay, and if you hit Shift, um, it does the same thing as joining shapes. So I don't need this, I don't need this, I don't need this. And what I want these to do is we'll merge together. Okay, so we now have a fish shape. Maybe I'll just merge those as well. Oops. That is according to the um, golden ratio. So this growth here is mathematically correct and mathematically pleasing according to the golden ratio. Now this doesn't really look great, so what I'll do now is I'll just quickly jump to a logo that I made earlier, which is a bit more complicated and looks a bit better. Okay, so here I have a logo that I created earlier. You probably recognize it from the first slide in the PowerPoint. Um, and you can see that this original logo without all the lines surrounding it, um, there's something sort of inherently pleasing about the way the shapes curl into themselves and it looks balanced and it looks well maintained and well created. That is because if, you know, I'm not big myself up too far because it's not fantastic. It's just okay for illustrative purposes. Um, that is because it is constructed entirely using golden circles. So you can see here that on the front page of this illustration, I've just basically duplicated and um, copied a whole bunch of circles keeping within the scale of the originals that overlap and intersect in such a way that leave uh, places which are then filled in um, with certain gradients to create a logo. Um, and what I'm going to do now is going to take you through this again, essentially, but do it live in front of you rather than having it prepared um, just to show you how simple it is to do, but also to show you a few stumbling blocks that you need to be aware of. So we've got our fish here. I'll just get rid of him because he's not very useful. And we just need to basically have a set of golden circles on hand. Now we created these a slow way before by creating this golden rectangle here with a golden spiral and then creating a circle in each one and scaling it down, et cetera, et cetera. If you find yourself needing smaller or larger circles, it's actually a lot quicker um, to do it this way. And you can do it this way from scratch. If you copy and paste in place a second version of whatever circle you want to duplicate, okay, um, you can just, with the size linked, um, you can just times that by 1.618 and you'll create the next ring up in the golden circle, okay, um, that is proportionate to that. 
Uh, and that's a quick way to do it, just in case you need a, a larger ring, essentially. Um, now, the best way to start when creating a, a logo using the golden ratio is to start with a sketch. Now, I have a sketch here that I'm just going to drop in. And you can probably tell it's the same lamplight sketch that I showed from that logo earlier. Slightly different because I made a few amendments, um, but good enough. So I'm just going to scale this shape down um, until it's roughly the size of the largest golden circle. OK, uh, and then I'm just going to quickly crop it, actually, um, so I can get rid of the bits I know I don't need. Like so. Um, and then I'm going to reduce the opacity down so it's not quite so bright. I'll then take the, all of my golden circles and put them on their own layer. And then I'm going to position this shape behind them. And what I'm going to try and do is roughly line up, now this is roughly, roughly line up the size of the logo with the size of our largest circle, okay? So it doesn't have to be perfect because the whole point is you're going to be using these lines instead of your sketch. So that's roughly there, good enough in other words. Um, perfect. Let's move this out of the way uh, and we'll just lock it in place so we can't accidentally select it. Now, it's a simple process of repeatedly laying over our golden circles over our shape in order to um, create the finalized lines that are mathematically correct as opposed to our sketch here. Um, it's a really simple process. You just make sure that you copy, so holding down Alt every time, you just Alt and drag your lines over your shapes until you're happy with the result. Okay, so that's a little bit out, but that's not a problem because we know that the circles won't be. So I'm going to line the first shape there with the aim of making this body part here. OK, just going to duplicate this one and shift it over like so, so that I can get this curve of the mouth here. OK, now I also know that I'm going to need a curve here, a curve here, a curve here, some smaller circles for these parts. OK, but it's best to take it in bits as you go, essentially. So if I just drag this circle here to create the underside of its belly. You'll notice that I want this line to come around, but the circle doesn't allow it. So I don't shape the circle to follow the lines. I allow the lines to change to follow the shape of the circle. So that line follows here. And what I'm going to need is a second one if I wanted to, to just bring that tail around even further. But what we'll do first of all is we'll create this body shape here. OK, so I'll just quickly duplicate that to get the lines come around further. Thank like you so and then select all of these circles and using the shape builder tool i'll remove the parts i don't need okay so i don't need you again i'm holding down alt don't need this one this one this one don't need either of those these shapes i can keep but i want to merge them okay so all of these can merge together okay like so and now i am left with the shape here but i'm going to keep it for now and i'll show you why so i'm just going to click that and that makes sure that that is a shape OK, so I should actually then be able to take that away and all the lines will still be there. OK, um, oops, one, one meant too many far there. Let's just redo that one again. Um, yep, yeah, good, that's still there. Uh, ensuring that those shapes are there and then I'm going to create these arms. OK, so just build that. Um, good. Now I need to create a curve here. OK, now that curve it's probably best done by one of these smaller circles. But as you can see, some circles are now touching and we need to ensure that they are directly on top of each other. And you do that by going to the outlines with control Y, zooming all the way in. And you can see that, yeah, those are pretty much there. There's a bit of a gap. Um, so we'll just fix that by zooming way, way in and just making sure that they align as best as possible. OK, and this is important later when using the shape builder tool, because if they don't align perfectly, you won't be able to remove that shape. So control Y to duck out of that. And let's try creating the rest of this shape's arms here. So using this one to create the arm. Probably duplicating it, but first choosing a shape for the edge of its hand. Again, making sure they touch. Yep. Um, we're going to have to duplicate this shape here for the edge of the hand. Like so, so that they line up now between those two circles. It's going to take a little bit of tweaking, but that's fine. Drop into outline view to make sure they align correctly between those two. That looks like it might be, so I duplicate that. 
Let's uh, move that into a line there. This can be tough to get this one. Perfect, I think. We should be able to do it. That's it. There we go. So you can see that it's touching there. If we zoom away and it's not quite touching. Touching there. And the second shape is pretty much touching down here too. So I might have to drag it down just a touch to get that curve right. There we go. So that's touching there now. And it is also touching there. Perfect. So it is quite precise, this process. And um, what that means is it is resolved to a perfect kind of shape, um, which you're not going to get in any other way apart from by doing this. So we'll just now select the shapes that we need. Um, so we're going to need to create this a shape, this shape, this shape. So we'll probably just take these ones. And using our shape builder, we'll get rid of the extra bits we don't need. OK, so we now don't need this. And we now don't need this or this or this. Oops, see that what shape isn't fully in there. Something is wrong here. OK, let's see what that is. It's touching there. Ah, but it's not quite touching there. So we'll just shift that over just a little bit. OK, so that took a little bit of tweaking, but we're finally there now. Um, and we can just remove that section like so. And mm, Ah, what's happened here? Ah, that's because I haven't selected all of those shapes. So select all of those, shape builder them. They are individual. Um, might join those two and um, might remove this one here because that is the edge of that circle. But we'll leave it for now um, because that's just using it to create the other end of this arm out here. So we'll do, we'll do this arm now. Um, let's take this second sized circle. And that seems about the right curve, like so. And then we'll create a smaller one. No, not that size, the size above it. For the hand, which we will align with this path. Doesn't matter if it touched that one, actually. So let's let's see what the original design, how far that came out. Not that far. Well, so we'll create this one coming out a bit further, just for ease's sake. So we'll bring that in line with that there. And then we'll duplicate this circle just to cap off the edge of this one. So we can zoom in here and we can bring that down like so. OK, that should do it. So what we can do now is take these and see if that's enough. Yep, seems to be. Let's remove this, this and this. Uh, and then if we select these two, we can merge those back together. So now you can see we're left with um, a arm here and an arm here. And we're also left with this path here, but we don't want this circle. So if we select all of these and go like so, we can actually remove this circle and we're left with this shape here, which we did want. So you can see how um, this is starting to take shape now. So let's just try and finish this off quite quickly. Let's grab a circle here for his lamp light. Let's make it a bigger one. Let's do it slightly different to the one I've already made. Let's leave it in position like so. And we'll create a single ridge on his head and obviously his eye as well. So we'll just drop the eye in there. And we we'll use these ones to create a ridge, I think. Is that a good one? Yeah, I think so. So we'll create that and... No, maybe that's too big. Let's have it align with the photo more. Um, let's can merge these because they're confusing a little bit. Like so. And then... Let's grab this one and duplicate it behind. Or should we just have it? No, let's just have it not overlap. Let's just have it connect with the head like so. So we'll select both of those and we can merge those together. There we go. All right, perfect. So let's assume we're happy with this design. Um, I'd probably still do some more to it, but for the sake of illustration, this works just fine. Um, let's select all of these shapes uh, and I'm just going to uh, swap the fill and the stroke with shift and X. And what that does is that just colors in each segment that we have here. OK, meaning that if it looks good in a silhouette, it's going to look good uh, when it's finished. So we can see here that this is now a logo that adheres perfectly um, to the golden circle. OK, and I'm just going to color it using my tip tuck colors. So it probably isn't going to look like um, a fish or a gecko, or whatever this is supposed to be. Um, it's going to look a bit funky, but that's fine for the sake of purposing illustrations. So let's grab this main body color here and drop it into a nice green. 
going to put the arm behind into a shadowed version of that green and the arm in front into the light one. Maybe have this as a dark one as well. You can see that where I've made a few mistakes, here for example, there's an overlap of where the circle was before. Now that means if I delete these, it's not going to adhere perfectly, but that doesn't matter because uh, I'll show you some examples later which use golden circles, but also then design on top of them, um, if that makes sense. So we'll turn this section here dark as well. We'll turn this section here dark green, and we'll have his fin and his glowing ball be yellow. Or maybe his glowing ball be off-white or dark blue. Yeah, that'll do. Okay, so we've created here a... Um, uh, a logo that aligns to Golden Theory. Sorry, had a bit of a brain fart there. Um, now, this is literally perfectly aligning to it. There is nothing extraneous on top apart from shapes you created from the Golden Circle. What I'm going to do now is show you a couple of examples where you can see the Golden Circles used within the design to create something inherently pleasing, and then it's accented on top so that it's not just literally figuratively, um, it's not just literally shapes derived from the circle. It's a design on top of it using that as a base. Um, because it's important to note that they don't have to adhere to it 100%. You can stray from that. So here's a couple of examples that do illustrate that point. Okay, so we have here two very famous logos. We have the Apple logo and we have the Pepsi logo. And I'm just going to quickly show you how these adhere to the golden circles. I'll shove the Apple up there for now and just leave us with the Pepsi logo um, and bring in our golden circles. Okay, so you can see, for example, that I've scaled these down so that they fit at least one of the rings. And you can see that the Pepsi logo in its entirety pretty much fits fits. Um, one of our golden circles here. Now there's going to be a little bit of leeway because I've literally just copied and pasted this. Um, so it fits into one of the golden circles. Now you'd say, okay, well, I can kind of see how maybe that works. Okay, no, that doesn't. So um, instead, perhaps it's the larger one that fits that curve there, which you can see it pretty much does. Again, allowing for leeway because I've just roughly scaled this. Um, you can also see, if I just drop that back in there. Um, okay, okay, well, this doesn't really align to it. This is a curved line that doesn't fit this circle at all and that bit doesn't fit that bit but what they've done is they've taken this smaller circle here which aligns perfectly like so and then they've illustrated on top of it okay this curve doesn't align with the rest of the circles there's none of these circles that aligns with it even if you try and put a smaller or a big one in there but however if you remove that pepsi logo okay you can see that it is still evenly weighted and has used an initial portion of those uh, golden circles, namely these two, okay, but with a th this third larger one as an accent, um, to the point where it fits it perfectly and they've just illustrated on top of it to gain that kind of personal flair. So it's important to remember you don't have to stick to these rigidly. These are sort of a building block for your design. Um, now the new Apple logo, for example, I'll just make these um, something like a yellow so that we can see them a bit easier. Uh, we'll just ditch the fill there. The Apple logo, for example, if I scale this up to uh, fill one of the circles, I'm going to make the Apple roughly the size of one bigger one here. You can see that whilst the shape doesn't align to it perfectly, there are clearly bits which do fit in with it. OK, um, so like the curve on that Apple core here. Again, I've just scaled it very quickly, so it's not 100 percent. But the curve on the Apple there. Um, this bite of the apple fits in here, like so. Um, in fact, if I just scale that down a little bit. Um, the dip in this apple probably fits with the curve of that circle there. So you can see this doesn't align to it perfectly, but it is using those rough scales um, that come from the golden circle ratio. Okay, um, You can see where these circles have been used in the design to create these different parts of um, the apple that do fit in with that design curvature. Yeah. So you can see that it is an even weighting and things like that. So whilst these golden circles are used, are great for creating designs and creating characters, they are building blocks for you to create something better on top of. Um, whereas these examples that I've showed you um, are literally created directly from the circles. And that's not a problem. You know, plenty of app logos um, are designed that way and are sort of functioning that way. Um, but it is meant to be a building block. 
so really that is all there is to it um well i say that it, i could go on forever but that's enough for a, a sort of beginner tutorial i think um let me know if you'd like me to do more of these sort of things i'm a bit hesitant because i'm not 100 percent on them myself um but i feel like i can help out a little bit and even if it is just a little bit then that's fine by me. So thanks very much for watching, everybody. I really do appreciate it. Uh, make sure to subscribe and ring that bell so that you get notified of all my new videos. And hopefully I'll see you all next time on Tip Tap. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you later. Remember to subscribe for more tips, tricks, and tutorials. Thanks for watching.